Today, we are beginning a new series, all from the book of 1 and 2 Kings in the Bible. You can follow along with us in your own timeline. We had the amazing opportunity of dropping off all your timelines in post boxes, but sadly, not everyone who's watching is from the Deep South, or we don't have your address. And you can do two things to get your own timeline. Either contact us at this number, or you can go to our website and download the timeline for yourself. The link will be down below. And there are some important things for you to know before we begin. Firstly, the book is actually all one book, but when the Bible was being written, they used scrolls, and one scroll wasn't long enough for this book, so they wrote it on two scrolls, but really, it's all one story. The second thing is that it comes from the Old Testament part of the Bible. It's the part of the story of God's people, the Israelites, before Jesus came. And thirdly, it tells a story. It's part of the story that began all the way back in Genesis, when God promised Abraham that he was going to give him people, a land, and a great blessing. It tells the story of God keeping that promise. The Israelites are now living in the promised land, and the book begins with the death of the great King David. Lastly, it asks and answers one question all the way through. How does God build a kingdom? And by the end of the series, it's a question we will all be able to answer to. Let's go to our story. Our story for the next two weeks comes from the first 11 chapters of 1 Kings. It's the story of King David dying and making his son Solomon king after him. We have heard some of the stories of Solomon before. We know he was incredibly wise, incredibly rich, and had an incredible number of wives. But one thing you might not know so well is that God spoke directly to King Solomon at four very important moments in his life. That's how we are going to tell the story over the next two weeks. The first time God spoke to Solomon was in a dream. Solomon was still a young new king and he had gone to a place called Gibeon to make offerings to God. That night, God appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, Ask me for anything you want. Solomon answered God, I am only young and I don't know how to be king over all your many people. Please give me a wise heart so I can rule these people and know the difference between right and wrong. God was extremely pleased with Solomon's answer and he said, You didn't ask me for a long life or for wealth and riches, but you asked me for the wisdom to rule my people. So I will give you what you have asked for a wise heart. There will never have been anyone like you for wisdom and there will never be again. And I will also give you what you didn't ask for, long life and many riches. No other king will be equal to you in your lifetime. Solomon woke up and it was clear over the next few years that God had given Solomon everything he had promised. The next two times God spoke to King Solomon was when Solomon was building a temple for God in Jerusalem. When Solomon started building the temple, he had been king for four years, and it had been 480 years since Moses led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt. As Solomon began building the temple, God told him that as long as Solomon obeyed God and followed his commands, he would live in the temple, in the middle of the people, and never ever abandon them. It took Solomon seven years to build the temple. It was immense, and Solomon was so wealthy by then that he coated the whole thing inside and out in gold. It must have shone there in the middle of Jerusalem. When Solomon had finished, he did dedicated the temple to God and prayed to God there, and God spoke once more. I have heard your prayers, and this temple is now my temple. My eyes and heart will always be here. What a moment that was. All the promises that God made to Abraham all those years ago were now true. God's people were living in Israel, God's promised land, with God living with them in the temple at Jerusalem. It was Israel's best time and moment. But God hadn't finished talking yet. He had something serious to tell Solomon and Israel. It was a warning. And it was a warning that we all need to hear because it helps us understand all the rest of the Book of Kings. On the very special day, 
God gave King Solomon this warning. If you or any one of your descendants turn away from me, disobey me and stop following me, and even begin to worship other gods, this is what I will do. I will send Israel out of the promised land. I will leave this temple and I will make this temple be a pile of rubble. People will mock you all and they will ask, why has this happened? And the answer will be because they ignored their God and loved other gods. That is why the Lord has brought disaster on them. It was a wonderful day in Israel for King Solomon and all the people, but a very scary warning too. Next week, we will see what Solomon does and what God says to Solomon when he speaks to him for the last time. Did you spot it? How many times did God speak to Solomon? What did King Solomon build for God and where? And work it out. What did God mean when he said to Solomon, there will never have been anyone like you for wisdom and there never will be again. And what did it mean that God's eyes and heart would be in the temple? And a think it through. What promises did God make to Abraham in Genesis 12 verses 1 to 3 that we see fulfilled in today's story? And a teen challenge for those out there. In Matthew chapter 12 verse 42, Jesus compares himself to Solomon. In what way? And what does it show us about Jesus? Think about 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 12. And what good news is it for us? And then you can pray together and you can pray and thank God that he keeps his promises. But before I pray, remember to stick down the pictures in today's lesson on your very own timeline. Let me pray. Dear God, thank you so much that you keep your promises. Amen.